federal government is a responsible party on paper for what happens at Westlake Landfill. And Exelon will write the check for Cobb, is our understanding. Mallinckrodt, when they entered into a contract with the DOE, the DOE took away all, Mallinckrodt signed away their ability to be charged in just about anything. They have immunity. Thank you for tuning in to the EnviroNews USA News Desk. I'm your host, Josh Cunnings. Today, we pick up where we left off in our 15-part mini-series, Nuclear Power in Our World Today. In episode one, we discussed America's toxic legacy in the West concerning 15,000 abandoned uranium mines, still open and still left in ruin. In episode two, we discussed another Manhattan-era mess, the uranium enrichment facility at Paducah, Kentucky. In this third episode, we pick up the simply mind-opening interview between EnviroNews Editor-in-Chief Emerson Yuri and the esteemed nuclear expert, industry whistleblower, and expert witness Arnie Gunderson with another Manhattan-era nightmare that remains unchecked. Here's that segment from the Gunderson interview. Speaking about um, some of these accidents, some of these releases that you don't hear about, so much. Uh, one thing we are definitely hearing about right now is the contamination at uh, Coldwater Creek in Missouri and certainly the landfill, the radioactive landfill uh, that is on fire there of which Bill Gates is a majority shareholder in that company. Um, have you been following that issue at all um, in Missouri and what does what does that look like at the moment? Sounds pretty scary. Well Farron's just two days ago put up a video about the uh, fire at the uh, at the St. Louis landfill um, and, it, and it is frightening and it's one of those situations where like Santa Susana when all that stuff was dumped there there were no major towns there were no major suburbs but over the last 50 years it's been surrounded by by towns like Ferguson uh, I mean it, 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 it butts up against now significant amounts of population and what will happen there is as the fire gets close that right now it's perhaps 700 feet away. As the fire gets close, it'll, it'll liberate radioactive radon, <clears throat> americium, other, other material into the air. Very dangerous isotope. Yes. Right now, the fire is liberating all sorts of nasty chemicals because the dump that's on fire is a chemical dump. But as it, as it approaches the area that's radioactive, you'll have those chemical releases as well as radon and other radioactive gases. It's not good. And there are no there are no good alternatives. So the people say, well, is there any way they can stop it? I mean, is there any plan underway? I mean, we we know that Bill Gates is involved in this company, and we also know that he is a huge proponent of fourth generation nuclear power and has huge ideas about basically turning Paducah, Kentucky, into plutonium to power the planet for the next hundred years. Um, what? I mean, is he engaged at all? Is he is he involved? Are there are there strategies to actually stop this fire, or is it just kind of well? Yeah, it's not being handled by commercial uh, ventures. There, there may be commercial liability at the end of this, but Department of Energy's been there for three or four years, um, and, and there there are no uh, good solutions. I, I had thought, you know, why don't they just build a trench between the radioactive and the non-radioactive? to prevent the fire. But the problem with that is that if the trench is there, it's going to allow oxygen to get into the, um, the, the, the fire and, uh, uh, and release even more toxic stuff. So the, the, um, the, right now it's Department of Energy and they're putting injection wells and trying to squirt stuff in it. Um, by the way, they don't even call it a fire. If they call it a fire, there's liability. If they call it a underground combustion it's not so you will not get any of the authorities to admit that all that smoke and all that heat is actually coming from a fire and so we've heard that um, actually several months from now the fire would make its way directly to the radioactive heaps that are there what would that look like I mean would it be a full-scale nuclear meltdown essentially or I mean what does that look like if it actually makes its way to that waste What's in the dump are the leftovers, the, 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 dregs from, uh, the dregs from all of the uranium that was processed there in 1940, 41, 42. Then what that means is that the, the americium and 
other things are decaying away to radon. And it'll be an increased amount of radon gas, which is highly radioactive and, and carcinogenic, being liberated because all that heat will push the radon gases up. Um, it's not a meltdown, and it's not highly enriched uranium like we have in a nuclear reactor. It's what's left over after they stripped out the highly enriched uranium. But there's so much of it, and uh, as the soil gets hot, like I said, it's going to drive off an enormous amount of alpha emitters like radon. To be frank, St. Louis has been absolutely hammered with radiation, so much so that even the Missouri State Department of Health has even acknowledged several cancer clusters in the Coldwater Creek area that Yuri mentioned in the interview. There are radioactive secrets beneath the banks and waters of a North County Creek that may be linked to a staggering number of cancers, illnesses, and birth defects. As the I-Team's Lisa Zygman reports tonight, in just four square miles, there are three reported cases of conjoined twins and cancer rates that one data expert says is statistically impossible. The inviting currents of Coldwater Creek, there's something very wrong, wind through miles of North County neighborhoods, parks, and schools. Why are all these people in North County sick? Strange coincidence, or was something else at play? Another classmate is now a professor of statistics at Northwestern University, and she ran her own analysis. She says the likelihood of so many of her peers having cancer is point zero 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 one, a statistical improbability. Connected by Facebook, high school, and illness, they made a startling discovery. The creek where they played as children carried a secret. When the bomb rush began, the government needed a contractor that was qualified and capable of purifying uranium to the highest possible degree. And those contracts ended up going to a company named Malincrot. In the 1940s, Malincrot Chemical Works in downtown St. Louis purified thousands of tons of uranium to make the first atomic bombs. But the process also generated enormous amounts of radioactive waste. Citing national security, the government quietly ordered the material move to North St. Louis County in 1947. 21 acres of airport land became a dumping site where a toxic mixture of uranium, thorium, and radium sat uncovered or in barrels. In the 60s, government documents noted contents from the rusting barrels were seeping into nearby Coldwater Creek. And by the 90s, the government confirmed unsafe levels of radioactive materials in the water. You're having to grasp this idea that there was something wrong that nobody knew about, our parents didn't know. Janelle and the 2,000 people now on her Coldwater Creek Facebook page wonder if over the years they breathed in radioactive dust that blew in from the dump or swallowed small amounts of toxic creek water just too surreal that this many people are sick. Some of the same nuclear waste that contaminated Coldwater Creek ended up at the Westlake landfill in Earth City. The majority of St. Louisans who get their water from the Missouri River have most likely never heard of the Westlake landfill, but they should. Since 1973, 8,000 tons of nuclear waste has been decaying at this landfill with no protective liner to separate it from groundwater. As frightened homeowners plead for help, I take an in-depth look at whether the EPA's latest assurances can be trusted. To understand the depths of concern... It's shameful. Shameful. Just look at the faces of those who wanted EPA officials to hear them. I am sicker than a dog. Autoimmune diseases... Autism. Karen Nickel, who battles lupus, Autism. believes she too is sick because of the nuclear waste dumped here nearly 40 years ago. Westlake especially is a ticking time bomb right now. The origins of the waste date back to the Manhattan Project and the creation of the first atomic weapons. Enormous amounts of uranium were purified at Malincrot Chemical Works in downtown St. Louis. The process generated piles of nuclear waste that the government sent to disposal sites near the airport. In the 70s, about 8,000 tons of uranium, thorium, and radium were dumped at Westlake. There's high groundwater table, there's people nearby. It's really stupid. It's a stupid place for it. 
Bob Chris, a geochemist at Washington University, says few things are as absurd as burying this waste in a substandard landfill in a floodplain in an urban area. This material can kill you and you don't even know practically until you're dead. Five years ago, in 2008, the EPA decided to put a cap on the landfill and cover it with layers of clay, rock, and dirt. The problem, according to Chris, is that this stuff gets more toxic over time and that it lasts for billions of years. There was such a public outcry that the EPA wasn't moving the stuff out of Missouri that the agency decided to conduct more tests. The latest test made public two weeks ago show 25 wells are contaminated with high levels of radium. Do you understand how alarmed the public is with this radioactive material in a floodplain in an urban area? People are not drinking the water that has the low levels of radium at the site. What about air? What about breathing it in? The radon, radon comes out of the ground everywhere. It's a naturally occurring element. It does come out of the ground a little bit more from this landfill but it dissipates pretty quickly. Those at this meeting were not comforted by what the EPA had to say, especially because those water samples were taken this summer during the drought. And the government paid the companies responsible for cleaning up the mess to conduct the tests. And I guess me just being a plain old citizen thinks, okay, well, if you know it's dangerous, chop, chop, <laughs> get it done. The EPA plans on doing more tests before issuing a final decision. One quick note about my report last night into the contamination of Coldwater Creek. The Facebook page that has been set up to collect cancer data was inundated after the story aired. In 24 hours, nearly 1,000 new visitors registered on the site to learn more. Malincrot, one of America's original chemical companies, ran several uranium processing facilities around the Midwest and was responsible for some unbelievable mucks. The Westlake landfill is part of that toxic legacy, but the waste that was chucked by the wayside there was never supposed to have made its way into the landfill to begin with. Still, no one has ever bothered to clean up that part of the dump. In another important story, we've been reporting on an unusual number of rare cancers near an old nuclear waste dump outside St. Louis. Well, tonight, the folks who live nearby have a more immediate worry. There is a fire burning underground, possibly within a thousand feet of the nuclear waste. And Benita Nyer is following this. We are sick. Our kids are sick and we're dying. Hundreds of people jammed into a Bridgeton Union Hall last night demanding to know if nuclear waste sitting in their local landfill could lead to disaster. We don't go outside. We don't open our windows. You can't 100% guarantee that we're okay. The nuclear waste was illegally dumped in the landfill in the 1970s. It was the byproduct of processing uranium for America's nuclear weapons program. An underground fire has been slowly burning at the landfill for five years. Residents are worried the fire could ignite the nuclear material that's about a thousand feet away. We will look at subsurface temperatures. The Environmental Protection Agency and the landfill owner, Republic Services, insist that's not true. Russ Naki is the company spokesman. Are you guys 100% sure that the underground fire will never touch the waste? We are confident that the Bridgeton landfill is in a managed state. Missouri's attorney general is not so confident. He is suing Republic Services, saying his experts tell him it's possible the underground burn could reach the nuclear material in three to six months. Ed Smith from the nonprofit Missouri Coalition for the Environment says if the underground fire meets the nuclear material, he fears an environmental emergency. It's not some wild speculation that if there's a fire which will disturb the surface of the landfill, uh, that we would see the radioactivity move off site. Just this month, the county notified residents of an evacuation plan in case nuclear material is released. That's probably about accurate. Too. Dawn Chapman is a mother of three who lives less than two miles from the landfill. How dare they come out and tell us everything's safe when they don't know what it is or where it is and how much they have. This scenario has never happened before, so at this point there is a lot of educated guessing going on. Scott, that is little comfort to the residents here. The Westlake situation has a bunch of citizens up in some frightful arms in and around the St. Louis area. We don't know who to believe. We don't know, we don't know anything. I mean, this is scary. I'm afraid of cancer. I'm afraid of my kids and grandkids getting sick and dying. 
the cancer rates in this area are just through the roof. Our children are suffering. The biggest That's the biggest reason I'm here, is for our children and their future. I'm afraid that the fire is going to reach the radioactive material and there's going to be a disaster. I'm afraid of, uh, really, I, you know, I don't know what I'm afraid of anymore. They've destroyed my quality of life. I still continue to be exposed to radon and benzene as they slowly release it in the air. I uh, have no more value in my home. So really, I am uh, i don't have anything to fear anymore. I am a person with a cause to uh, regain my quality of life, to regain my property value, to regain the health of my community. And, uh, and that, that's where I'm gonna start at with every breath I've got left in me to fight for this rad waste to be removed. We've been fighting for three years, folks. Join us in the efforts to clean up this radiotoxic waste from Westlake Landfill. As a resident of Spanish Village, we've been dealing with this. We've been sheltering our home for over five years. We can't open our windows. Our eyes burn when we walk outside. We vomit when we get out of our cars. This is what we've been dealing with. We know there's something in that dirt. If it's where they're telling us it's at, and then they're telling us now that Attorney General's saying it's outside of their of the perimeter of the property, why would it not be right there in the middle then? It didn't jump over what's on fire. But they won't test it. They haven't tested it. We don't know what's burning right now. We don't know what's going into those flares right now. We have no idea. We won't know how far anything's going to reach until the event happens. I mean, I understand that that's not an answer that you want to hear. This is not just limited to Hazelwood and Bridgeton. You've got highly densely populated areas of St. Louis County and people aren't even aware that this is existing. We are doing a disservice to the residents of St. Louis County by not educating them this is going on. When I moved here in June with my four children and we are packing up and leaving in a few weeks. And everybody in my community that I have told thinks that I am crazy as I believe that there's nucleus, nuclear waste next door. It needs to come from a public official. It can't come from a Facebook page. They don't believe it. When I received a letter from the Orchard Farm School District, it was so vague. And who is feeding the school district the information? It said there's a hazardous waste situation. That's bogus. Hazardous waste can be, you know, Disposal of bail polish remover. This is so major. It's best to stay inside. That is the best um, advice that any uh, coming from the CDC. Are you familiar with Bhopal, India? Are you? Yes, I am. Uh, 1984. Mm -hmm. And on December 2nd, these people were not aware of what that chemical company was doing. And they stayed in shelter and then tested positive for what that chemical company was doing. And they stayed in shelter and then tens of thousands of those people died. People still have to breathe. For you to say that shelter in place is the right thing to do without having any other precautions, without knowing the jet stream, how it's moving, without talking to any of these first responders on how they're going to do this, which neighborhood goes first, it is uncalled for and disrespectful to the people who live in this region for you not to have a better plan. To the best of our knowledge, Bill Gates himself happens to be one of the largest stockholders in Republic Services, the company that currently owns the mess. Perhaps Gates should consider cleaning up just this one nuclear mess before attempting to fast breed Paducah, Kentucky into plutonium to power the planet for the next hundred years, just a thought. You can hear more about Gates' Paducah plan in the previous episode if you haven't seen it yet. Please make sure to join us tomorrow for episode four in our series, where we continue our tour of Manhattan-era nuclear nightmares that continue to threaten people in America and beyond. The next stop, Washington State's notorious atomic dump, Hanford. Until then, I'm Josh Cunnings, signing off from the EnviroNews USA News Desk. They didn't try to inform you about the, the potential dangers? Oh, Mr. no, no, but never, ever, never, never, never. I wouldn't have worked there and I don't think anybody else would. Nobody even knew what uranium was. They might as well have said they was producing coffee down there. I wouldn't have known any difference. The best case scenario is the fire is going to burn for five years per Republic Services. Five more years.